All right, so my name is Emmanuel Glass, as you've just heard, and um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what museums have been up to with F lately. Um, I work at the YCBA, so I will run through what we are currently working on with IIIF, as well as um, other use cases from other museums. Um, and I will try to highlight about four trends that I've seen uh, currently um, for museums and IIIF. So the first um, common um, way museums use IIIF currently is to uh, publish it on their online collections catalog. Um, this is a page from the YCBA. You see the red and white icon down below. I'll show you a few more. One from the Frick Collection in New York. Um, the IIIF icon is black and white. This one is from the NGA in Washington, D.C. And this one is from the Getty Museum. Um, this quick run through shows you how um, different museums have implemented IIIF differently. All those pages look a little bit different. But as soon as you bring all of those images in one interface, in one viewer, then the um, institutional branding goes away a little bit, and it's much easier to compare and study those images. Um, and of course, what, wouldn't, what would be great would be to actually um, have projects that really bring museum objects, but also library objects and archival material together. And I'd like to put in for maybe a future award um, for IIIF and have a IFI um, award. Excuse a bad pun, but um, <laughs> I'd love to see that. Um, IIIF, um, you know, the institutional branding does not go away. Um, the manifest, the uh, presentation API, has definitely a space for you to put your logo and the attribution. So here you see the lovely uh, Yale Center for British Art logo. Again, institutional branding um, in, in the place where you choose those, um, those assets to bring into your IIIF viewer. So that doesn't go away, it's there. The way we've uh, thought about IIIF here is that we've started at the YCBA is to add it to our online catalog, which started with uh, um, download functionality for images. Unfortunately, the image ribbon um, could not show all the images for, for all the images. Um, this particular painting has a lot of images attached to it, uh, front, back, frame, unframed, et cetera. And it, obviously, they show much better um, in a mirador uh, viewer. It makes for a much better user experience, really. We've done a little bit of experimenting with um, showing conservation images in, in the Mirador viewer, and here we're showing different layers of that, um, of that image. This is, um, this is a little bit different, still conservation, but this is not something we would actually show online, just to drive the point home that IIIF could very well be uh, used for private research uh, purposes. So all in all, we can really say that um, IIIF, at the very minimum, kind of hits on, on three or dresses, three different concerns um, that are usually readily there on museum's mind. One has to do with discovery. There's a vast network of, of images that are available. Um, we love the cross-disciplinary aspect of it. Of course, it's great to have glam uh, material right there at our fingertip. And the usability factor is really, is really important. And you've seen uh, examples before of uh, lovely pan, zoom, and, and compare images. Um, a second um, use case, one could say, is uh, has to do with research. Uh, so I've just started talking a little bit about that again, um, where we um, have kind of a behind the scene um, system at the YCBA to compare all different images from private uh, collections. Um, it also makes use of annotations. And I'm flying through this, um, but um, you know, you'll know you hear more about this in other presentations. And, and yeah, again, you know, private aspect of uh, the IIIF um, APIs. 
Exhibitions. Exhibitions are a big deal for museums, obviously, and um, the VNA has done a lovely job presenting um, material related to the Aquitania uh, Ocean Steamliner um, material online. They've had um, a little bit of uh, help from a London-based um, company called Digirati, which has basically um, uh, created different ways to um, interact with this poster. You can essentially choose your path as a user, or you can follow the annotations um, that are highlighted in white uh, pluses there. Uh, I'm sure there will be a presentation on this later, so please um, uh, reach out if you're interested. Gallery displays, a big deal for uh, museums as well. And I know uh, Jeff is in the room, so thank you for those slides. Um, the Harvard museums have made a fantastic use of uh, in-gallery displays, Chubayev in-gallery displays. And this is a ginormous wall. This is actually obviously life size. So the same images scale up. Um, this is one of their um, scrolls. And this image, this work of art, you can tell, is a little bit difficult to work with. It's very long, it's skinny, um, and so that IIIF allows them to do that in a different way. The Art, of Chica the, um, art Institute of Chicago also has uh, done very nice work uh, with embedding, you know, Tripaya viewer in, directly in the gallery. This is particularly helpful for uh, objects that are fragile or where you can see only one page at a time. And the final use case I'd like to go over is um, for publications. So the Johnson uh, papers um, at the Philadelphia Museum of Art has done this really well, where they bring together a material from both the artworks in the collection as well as the archival material. Uh, they had a, a very strict kind of a series of um, requirements whereby they wanted the curators to be able to select exactly the region of the images uh, from you know, the full images to embed in the essay for the online publication. Um, so they, they've really worked hard about embedding Trubayev in their workflow uh, without disrupting too much of that, which is great. They do side-by-side -side comparison, obviously. And the final, final use case I'll show you is this um, Paul Mellon Center publication. Um, again, DJIT has been hard at work with them, but offers, and that offers full text search of the OCR text. Um, it's, it's um, I'm flying through, but if you, if you um, can reach out to any of us, um, I've borrowed much from other colleagues who are all here today and the rest of the week, so please reach out. And I will put a shameless plug here for our Thursday museum panel. <laughs> and you can see the four people here. I'll be with uh, Richard de Vienne, Stefano from the Getty, and one of your colleagues uh, here, uh, Carsten Heck. So we're very happy to have him with us. Thank you.